past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Q Show here. And now. Whenever we last left off, we had Dorzaya. Who? He staged his own kidnapping whenever he found out that people were coming for him. He did then do something. He decided to make an urban legend out of the last living member of the Black Wolf Clan to be seen. Now, it has been a few weeks, let's just say three, since the Black Wolf was kidnapped and presumed dead. In this amount of time, a lot of things have happened. Around the area by the border, it's believed that the Black Wolf, he exists. There is a legend in a story spreading like wildfire. If you have anything to do with slavery or human trafficking, this creature, the vengeance of the clan, will come for you. And he won't leave anyone alive. If you're lucky, you'll escape, barely breathing and just able to tell the tale of the wolf. Now, we do currently cut to the woods, where a man, he's running. He has a knife embedded in his shoulder, and he has a limp. There's blood running down the f his face and barely set of one of his eyes. As he's just thinking, Shit, shit, it should have been just a story. It should have been just a story. Now, the man is trying to run fast. As he does fall over and trip, him going to claw his way out of the dirt as he does get back onto his feet and throw his head over his shoulder. As he does see it in the distance, the glowing red eyes, they're staring him down. And then he hears what can be best described as a giant mighty howl. And the man he just does take off in a faster and faster sprint. His heart is pounding and he can hardly even think. Now, you do actually have where he does continue to run. Until, you do actually have where he does hide behind a tree. He was running for five miles straight. He can't smell anything and he can't hear anything. So he should be, this being where somebody does finally catch him. As, you do actually have where he does go to spin his head around the tree and there's no one there. Turning back around as somebody does grab him directly by his throat and then pick him up. Now, the man he is confused, looking directly at what grabbed him. The hand is covered in dark magic, or at least he believes to be a dark spirit. And there is Midoriya's entire body. Midoriya is expecting to <coughs> a few <coughs> unique skills. He's using dark magic, or black magic if you want to call it that. And he's even using a few other abilities to make himself appear as a vengeful spirit. So you're the one who did it. Took them? I don't know what you're talking about. You're trading other people. I don't like that. What are you? Call me the vengeance of the clan. Bringer of death. Many names. Listen, please. I, I wasn't involved. I just found them. I wasn't the one who took them. Hmm. Greed. It angers me. Please, I'll do whatever you want. Just don't kill me. Don't kill you? Alright. No. Roya, he does continue to press the man against the tree. As he pulls him away and slams him back into it. 
the tree breaking as he does so. Now, Murray would then drop the man onto his, onto his knees, as the man does fall forwards. Midori going to hold out a picture and ask him if he does know exactly where this man is. Now, the man he does look up and see it. That, that man, yes, he's 50 miles from here. I see. Exactly what's his name? Um, his name, his, his name, it's, it's, it's... Now, Midori can tell that the guy is panicking. He can't get the words out. He's useless. What are you doing one simple thing? Bringing his foot up as he does bash the front of the man's thighs, directly breaking the bones in his leg as he doesn't go to bring his hand up and put his hand into the man's mouth as he's screaming, rather than pulling out the man's tongue. Now, Midoriya, he does then bend back down, holding up and explaining to him that he'll spread the tail, and if he doesn't, he'll find him once again. Maroya, him then being surrounded by a mist as he does then disappear. And the man he does just lay there on the ground in the forest, both crying and in fear. He's in incredible pain. And he's scared shitless. That thing's supposed to be just a story, but it actually does exist. The vengeful spirit of the Black Wolf Clan. Now, with that being said, we do have a moment where he does reappear directly on top of a mountain. And he does then inform Belle. He thinks that he found out exactly where her sister's being held. Hmm? Dorzaya. Thank you. Hmm. Don't thank me. Please. You make me sound like a hero. Hmm? Dorzaya, you are a hero. <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't like slave trading. That's all. That's, that's it? Yes. I'm anything but a good person. Now, Maroya he does look away from her, and informing her that they can use his wyvern form and get there in under an hour. Or if he does at least go at his max speed a few minutes. Asking her what she does want to do. Now, she does then inform Dorzaya, this is what she does currently want to do. And Midori does then actually have his wings pop out of his back as the two do take flight. Now, Belle, she does think about it. As the two they are flying through the night sky, she does just wonder. Dorzaya, he used to be weak. And now look at him. They're quite literally flying through the air at high speeds. And he's, well, a savior, you could say. The man she's seen kill so many different innocent people before. The man who was broken and beaten. He's currently one of the strongest men she's ever met. It's very strange. She gave up all hope of ever being saved years ago. And now she's off to save her sister. To find the remaining family she does have. Now. She does look up at Dorzaya. As she does hold her in her arms as they're flying. She's starting to get used to being in physical contact with another person. Since. It's not a bad thing anymore. The only contact she used to get physically was whenever she was beaten and hurt, and even tortured. However, Dorzaya, he's ruthless and kind at the same time. It's very strange to even try and describe. You have to be there to experience it to understand exactly the type of person he is. Now, the two they're currently floating outside of what could be best described as the local manor, or the local lord's estate. And Midori, he does ask her exactly what she does want to do. And she does look up at him. Hmm? What? Yeah. 
Listen, Lee and Ray aren't involved in this. They're currently still heading towards the capital. We'll meet them there. They're going to be doing some adventures and stuff like that, but we're taking care of this matter. Hmm? I understand, but what do you mean? What I mean is... This is your family, right? I think you should fight. But, but I can't. Okay, that's fine. But... I can't handle matters for you all the time. You're... still weak. I... I understand. But... This is to make you strong, do you understand? Hmm? What? This is to make you strong. <sighs> Think about it like this. On the off chance I ever do die one day, you'll be left alone with Ray and Lee. If they ever die, you'll be by yourself. You might get stuck back in where you were, a slave. So... Uh, what I'm telling you right now is you have to be willing to fight and kill for what you do believe in. You believe in freedom, don't you? Hmm? The choice a person has is their own, and it can't be controlled. So, I want you to fight and kill. Do you understand me? Hmm? Yes, Durzai, I, I understand, but I just don't think that I... You murdered a goblin. You've killed in dungeons before. These men aren't people. They're slavers and bastards. They, def they don't deserve anything close to mercy. And if you think they do, then I'm sorry to tell you. I don't think that you should be here with us anymore. Hmm? What? No, I, I understand what you're talking about, but I just... I'll do it. Good. Now... Yeah. The two they do land outside the manor. As you do actually have for Bella, she does begin to start walking up to the place. Now, this is quite interesting. The guards, they are paying attention, and they do start to sniff something strange in the air. As they do actually then see something dark and mysterious. The fog begins to start rolling in. And it's quite strange. As the fog does roll in their senses, they start to get dulled and focus on something else. There's a strong smell of blood and iron. This isn't right. Something's off here. Now, as they do think that, there actually is then whenever a booming voice can be heard that does echo. Here comes the big bad wolf. Now, the men they do get on guard. This has got to be just some sort of joke. They've heard of that tale and it's nothing more than just that. Right? The two men then looking at each other. As something does grab one and pull it directly into the mist. The man screaming as he does go. Before, his screams are cut short by something. And then you actually have where Midoriya, he doesn't quickly move. With Bell. Bell, she is set directly behind the man, taking the knife Dorzaya gave her as she is then going to grab her, his head and pull his neck backwards, quickly jabbing the knife, knife upwards into his jugular. Now, we do actually cut to inside the manor, where the man, he's having quite a bit of fun. He's currently sitting down to eat his dinner. And he's watching as he does hold up a piece of meat directly to the right. And you do actually have where somebody is chained up and trying to at least reach out desperately for the meat. And the man here has watched that. As he does then order the person to kneel. The collar around their neck shocking them as they're sent flying backwards onto their knees. Now, the man he does is then hold it a bit closer. As he does wave it in the air, trying to tempt the hungry slave. Now, he doesn't continue to sip on his wine. As you do actually have where he doesn't pull the meat away quickly. The slave actually being able to grab it this time, as they then go to force it into their mouth and chew. The man quickly getting angry as he does stand up and take the empty bottle. 
as it is then bashed across the slave's head, and then could to kick them in the gut with his boot, as then t- does then tell them to force that meat out of their gullet, since it's undeserving of them. Now, the slave does try to keep the meat in their mouth. They haven't eaten in days. And, well, they need food. The man watching as the slave does puke up the meat before trying to consume it once again, and then continue to kick and kick and kick. As we do have where the lights do suddenly cut out in the mansion, and the man he is confused. That was powered by a slave. This is quite strange. The lights here are connected to a mana pool, and it's powered whenever people do, well, hold their hands up to a crystal and allow their energy to be stored and then distributed through certain lines. Now, the man he does just wonder exactly why that went out. As he does go to at least ring a bell, that is supposed to be heard by a demi-human slave. Now, the man he could, would come walking up. As he's then exactly, he does exactly then ask the man exactly why the power did go out. The man, bending down as inform his master, he is unaware. And then he'll check on it immediately. Now, the man does quickly then turn and bolt away. He can see perfectly in the dark. And he's looking around. As he does then round a corner and see something. He does watch as... There's a man who's at least holding up a guard's head. Along with that, the man, he does then look back around the corner. As he does see that the guard, one of his legs are missing, one of his arms are missing, and this, well, creature that's attacking, he does currently have his hand directly through the man's intestines. As he does then pull something directly through the hole in his gut. And the man he does then go to look and throw himself back around the corner, trying to hide as he does go to bring his hands up to cover his mouth. Dear God. Now, he does then go to look back around the corner. As he does so, he does see glowing red eyes. Before he does go to throw himself backwards and falling onto the floor. The big bad wolf going to walk forwards as he does go to bend down. And then seeing the collar around the man's neck. You're a slave. You get to live. The man just standing there stunned. As this thing does go to walk directly around him. And the man he does hear the footsteps. Now, the man's quite confused. As we do actually then have where he does see somebody directly walk behind that creature. Him looking up to see a demi-human. Now, he does directly then turn back around, going to walk back the direction as a slave collar, it does zap him, and the man he does then go to try and grab it. Him then going to stand back up and turn around and just go back to run the direction he was ordered to go. Now, we do have for the man, he's already opened another bottle of wine, and he's began to drink this more and more. He was having a fantastic night. The lights went out, and then the slave, it ruined his little game. And it's currently just laying there, beaten and bloody. Now, the man, he doesn't go to pull something. As he doesn't watch the doors, they do get thrown open. And mist does begin to start surrounding the ground. Now, he doesn't understand what's going on. As he does then see something dark and mysterious walk in. As it does then turn to him as it does have glowing red eyes. Hmm? Exactly who are you? You are an intruder on my property. The man going to at least bring his hand up and ring a large bell. As he does then wait. He does sit there confidently. And we do then actually have where Midoriya, he does then quickly vanish from the man's vision. As the man he does at least then take a breath, a breath of relief. And he does then go to turn. Now, 
As he does, turning to actually over midway, he does grab the man's chair. And the man, he is confused. As he does go to try and stand up, before midway, he just grab the man directly by his shoulder and break a bone that's directly next to, well, his arm. Now, the man, he does actually start to scream out in pain. As midway, he does then force the man to sit back down. I'll have you know you'll pay for this. Exactly who are you? No. Midway doesn't say a word as Bell does walk in. Now, the man does directly turn and stare directly at her. As she does at least begin to start asking some questions. Where is my sister? Hmm? You. Hmm. <laughs> Another one. Quite interesting. I'll offer you fifty gold for her. Hmm? No. Hmm? Man then turning to his right to look up. As Midoriya, he does do one thing. He does directly force the man's arms onto the table. And he does then stab two blades through the man's forearms. As he does then go to run them deeper until they're directly down to exactly the grip or at least the top of the grip for the blade. And the man he does just, well, sit there in pain. As he does try to force his arm, or at least force the blades out of the table. And the way he does then go to splash down to the guys, bend in the, the, the bend in his elbow. As he does break them, and then inform him to sit back down. Now, Bell does begin to start asking more and more questions. As the man, he does at least try to not let his gaze go to his right. However, after Bell she does directly look at him and ask him this question, she just watches his eyes jump to the right before jumping back over to her. Her then turning to her left and seeing a chain on the wall. Muroya walking over, grabbing the chain and directly ripping it out of the wall. As the guy does watch it. And then Muroya does start to take his normal form. Now, the man he is surprised, a black wolf. Now, Muroya he doesn't go to bend down and directly see exactly if this is her. And Midori, he does find Bell's sister, beaten and malnourished, as he does at least grab her and pick her up. And Bell, she does turn to directly see that. Now, Bell, she does tell Doraziah to allow her to heal her sister. Midori is going to put her on the table as she does begin to start healing her sister. Now, Bell, she does directly stare at the man as the wounds and injuries do begin to start disappearing. Along with that, you do actually have where she does ask her sister if she's alright. And her sister's muttering a few things as she's shaking. Now, she does directly go to lean down and try and ask her sister what she's asking for. As her sister's just saying one single phrase. Belden, having her face run stone cold. Looking back up at the man. <laughs> the man smiling. Now, Bell should directly look at Dorzaya, asking if she can take care of him. Now, Midoriya already knows what the girl was muttering about. The way this nation works, with slave trading being illegal, they don't have access to the perfect methods the human kingdom does have. They don't have the perfect slave magic. So this kingdom, they have to use other methods to have control. They use certain chemicals to alter the makeup of someone's mind. They get them addicted to that. And then, they'll basically do anything for it. And you do actually then have Belle. Who she does take the knife that Orziah did give her to kill the guards. She already killed quite a few men with it. And she does feel bad about it. But she doesn't feel bad anymore. As she does then go to stab downwards into the man's hand. And the man he does scream out in pain. As Bell she does then go to stand up and directly walk into the kitchen. Now, the man he does look back at Dorzaya. 
as Midoriya, he's just doing one simple thing. He's mixing together a few things to feed Bell's sister. And the man he does watch exactly the level of care he puts into a slave. <laughs> You'll never get away with this. You understand that? Hmm? You don't exactly know who I am, do you? You're that rumor going around, aren't you? The wolf that frees slaves? That punishes those who own them? Who sell them? Yes, I am. Now. But the way he does let the man in on a little secret. Him taking his true form as a human. Hmm? A human? Yes. What did I say? The man watching as the scars reappear as Midoriya, he doesn't stare directly at him. Along with the dragon slayer markings appearing on his face. Hmm? You're... You're who that creature I've heard about. Hmm? Heard about? Yes. Over a month ago, on the battlefield, thousands lost their lives. A titan was killed. They said it was... Well, a dragon slayer. Hmm. I didn't know it was already famous here. So, what do you plan to do to me? Hmm? I plan to do nothing to you. However, what are you going to say looking back over at Bell? As just set down, exactly a container full of knives. As he does tell, say that she's the one that's going to be doing things. Now, Bell should just take a sharp cooking knife. As she just looked down at the blade and her own reflection in it. She used to use these to serve people. However, now, her going to jab it directly downwards into the other man's hand as she does then take out another blade, informing him that they're going to be playing their own little game, since he likes to play with people's lives. Now, Bell, she does then do a few things, jamming these blades into his arms and legs, along with even places in his torso, as she does then go to take out a large butcher knife. As she does then go to throw the blade upwards and cut off the man's fingers. The man screaming more and more. As Bell, she does then cut out his tongue. Now, Midori does watch what Bell does do. As she enacts revenge for her sister. Now, eventually you do actually have where Bell's sister does begin to start waking up. And at least somewhat semi-conscious. Her hearing the screams in a familiar voice. Now, eventually, the man, he does pass. Bell, she did at least make it last while she could, using healing magic and then starting the process all over again. Now, this is where Midoriya, he did see exactly how brutal Bell was. He did find it to be quite interesting. He believed that this girl was pure and innocent. However, now it appears that he may have corrupted her himself. Now, Midori has then go to pick up Bell's sister, and the two do, they do leave the mansion. As the next morning, people they are surprised. Somebody went to go at least deliver supplies to this man, and whenever they did arrive, the front gate was ripped open and guards were found dead nearby. And there was the brutal scene. The lord of the area was found dead. Knives in his eyes, his tongue cut out, and 56 different knives, ranging from sizes and, well, utilities or uses, stabbed into his entire body. Now, we do actually have where Bell and Dorazaya, they did arrive at a place safe. And they did begin to start caring for Belle's sister. Her sister needs food. And it was going to be quite some time before she does make a full physical recovery. As we do actually have where she did wake up. Her actually going to sit up and go to try and block a blow. As she does then look down at her hands. And she's while well, shaking. You're awake. Her then going to look up. And she does see something surprising. Her sister wearing, well, 
a dress and a smile. As she is going to directly lunge forward with all of her strength, and pull her younger sister into a hug, asking, "Where has she been? Where has she been?" Now, she doesn't at least look over her sister's shoulder as they're hugging, and she does see a man, that is a wolf, as he's cooking something on the fire. Her going to lunge backwards, asking exactly, "What is that guy?" Hmm. Oh, listen. You don't need to be afraid of him. He saved us. He saved you. He saved me. He's the reason we're together again. <laughs> now, her sister is shaking, and we do actually have where she does. Well, Bell, she does go to stand up and directly walk back over to the fire, as she does go to grab some food, and walk over, as she does then go to feed her sister, who can't really even bring up her arms correctly. Now, with that being said, these two have been reunited, and for right now, it's going to be a lengthy little process of recovery. But Belle, she does believe that with time and effort, her sister, she can't get better. Things can't go back to the way they were before, but they're together again, and they will move forwards as a family. Now. With that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.